If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this question would be to draw a picture of the survivor as it's resting on the raft. We've represented this survivor as this black square, the raft is in brown, and then we've shown a portion of the raft that is submerged underneath the water, and so we've colored it blue. In part A, we are asked to draw a free body diagram, or a force diagram, of this system. And so what we'll have to do is identify the forces acting on the survivor and raft. It might be helpful to sort of combine the survivor and raft into one object that we can call the system, and we can represent that with just a little dot. And so the forces acting on this system would include the weight of the survivor, which would be pointing straight down, and we can denote that with a W. We have the weight of the raft itself also pointing straight down. Now we've sort of drawn that force offset from the black dot just so that we could see it, and since this is the weight of the raft, we can perhaps call that WR. Now there's also an upward force that's acting on our system, and that would be known as the buoyant force. So let's go ahead and draw and label that. And so this would complete the free body diagram of our system. So part A of the question is solved. For part B, we're being asked to write Newton's second law for the system in one dimension. They say one dimension because all of the forces are acting in the y direction only. Now Newton's second law requires us to take the sum of the forces, and since our system is in equilibrium, which means it's not accelerating upward or downward, we can set the sum of the forces equal to zero. The two downward forces we can call negative, since they're pointing down, and then the buoyant force would be positive, since it's pointing up. So let's fill in those three forces for the sum of the forces. And this Newton's second law arrangement would complete part B of the question. So we can move on to part C. And in part C, we're asked to calculate the numeric value for the buoyancy force. And in order to do that, we should write out the equation for the buoyant force. And that equation tells us that the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid, which in this case is water, multiplied by g, multiplied by the volume of the submerged portion of our object. Now, for the volume of the submerged portion of the object, we would have to look at the portion of the raft that is actually underneath the water. And we can see that just a little bit is underneath the water. Perhaps we can call this vertical distance right here a lowercase d. And the raft is a rectangular shape. We didn't really show that, but maybe we can add a little bit of detail to our picture just to remind ourselves that the raft has a nice rectangular shape. And so we know that the volume of a rectangular shape, or rectangular prism technically, would be the area of the prism multiplied by its height. Now, the diagram isn't perfect, but hopefully we can see that only the blue portion of the raft is submerged. So what we would do is we would take the area of that submerged portion and we would multiply it by its height. Now we've already marked the height of the submerged portion as d. So in other words, our volume of the submerged portion of the object can be written as area times d. And that's what we're gonna fill in over here in the buoyant force equation. Now we can easily calculate that area because we were told that the raft has dimensions of two meter by two meter. So that's what's gonna go in there for the area. And then the question noted that the amount of the raft that's actually submerged is 0 0.024 meters. So that's going to be what we called the D. And then we'll fill in G and the density of water. We've omitted the units because everything was written in the standard unit. The density is kilograms per meter cubed. G is meters per second squared. The area dimensions are in meters and so is what we call D. So if we work this out, we get approximately 964 newtons. So this would be the correct answer for the buoyant force, part C. Moving on, we see part D asks us to use this value of B and also the weight of the survivor to calculate the weight of the styrofoam raft. And really what we can do is actually go back to the Newton's second law equation that we had set up. We can fill in the buoyant force that we just determined. The weight of the survivor can be easily calculated by multiplying its mass times G, and then we can 
solve for the weight of the raft. Remember, the mass of the survivor was 62 kilograms. And when we crunch that down and solve for WR, the weight of the raft, we would obtain approximately 357 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part D of the question. For part B, in order to calculate the density of the styrofoam, we just have to remember that density is equal to a mass divided by a volume. Now, the mass of the styrofoam can be determined now that we have its weight, because we recall that mass is equal to weight divided by the gravitational constant. So we can substitute this expression for mass into our density equation. And for the volume of the raft, we go back to the given information and we recall that it's a 2 meter by 2 meter by 0 0.09 meter raft. And so that's basically length times width times height, which gives us the volume of the entire styrofoam raft. So that's what we'll fill in here. Let's go ahead and fill in the known quantities. And when we simplify this, we should get approximately 101. And then the unit, the standard unit of density would be kilograms per meter cubed. So this is the correct answer to part E. For part F, to get the maximum buoyant force, we return to the buoyant force equation, which is the density of the water times G times the volume of the submerged portion of the object. And in order to get the maximum buoyant force, the question notes that the raft would have to be entirely submerged up to its top surface. So when we plug in for the volume of the submerged portion, we're going to use the entire volume of the raft. We're going to use the 2 by 2 by 0 0.09. That would correspond to the entire raft being submerged. G is 9.8, and then the density of water again was the 1,025. And when we work this out, we get roughly 3.62 times 10 to the third, and the unit here would be newtons. And then finally, on to part G, what total mass of survivors can the raft support? We can once again return to the Newton's second law equation. We can fill in the maximum buoyant force that we just determined. The weight of the raft we determined earlier was 357 newtons, and then what we can do is replace the weight of the survivors with the expression mg and solve for that mass m. Perhaps we can come up over here and do that work. We could solve for the mass m by adding the 357 over to the other side and then subtracting the 3.62 times 10 to the third and then dividing by negative 9.8. When we solve that, we get approximately 333 kilograms. So that would be the correct answer to part G of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.